biometric systems, security and biometric systems. Uh, we had the pleasure of welcoming uh, to, to give us this talk on uh, Starba by Starbuck, who uh, is from, from G Germany, I believe, right? Yeah, yes. Uh, he works on uh, <coughs> biometric systems in Germany and has studied biometric systems in uh, quite a few uh, colleges and universities in Germany. And um, I think it will be very interesting because bi biometric systems is used a lot in everyday life now, you know, identity cards, ATM cards, etc., etc. So uh, let's give a warm welcome for Starbuck. Hello, and welcome to my talk, um, Hacking Biometric Systems. Um, this talk is mainly divided into two parts, but first of all, I will give you a short introduction um, to biometric systems in general, so which parts they consist of and how they work. Um, after that, I will talk about attacking the biometric data inside the system, which means communication data and reference um, data. Um, this kind of attacks are nearly the same for all biometric systems, um, different from the attacks um, that are using the sensor. They are quite unique and that's why I will focus on the three most common um, systems, fingerprint recognition, face and iOS recognition. As you all know, um, biometric systems are becoming mainstream. Um, they are used um, everywhere where you, will, uh, you want to um, identify people. For example, every newly sold notebook are equipped with a fingerprint reader um, as a replacement for entering passwords. Um, biometric systems are often used for payment purposes, so there are a lot of stores around the world um, that are using the so-called pay-by-touch technology. Um, so you don't need money to pay your stuff, but only your finger. Um, the um, Citibank Singapore is rolling out um, credit cards with fingerprint right now. And in Japan, lots of ATMs are equipped with um, vein recognition. Um, but the, the driving force behind um, the development of biometric systems um, is a uh, control. And over here, uh, Malaysia um, is an outrider. So Malaysia um, set up the first electronic passport in 1999. And since December 2000, 2002, they've deployed over 44 million passports, including electronic fingerprints, or the data of the fingerprints. Um, and these fingerprints, by the way, are stored unencrypted in the passport. And you will um, see what this means later on during this talk. Um, so um, all systems I've described so far um, consist of the same part, I'm shown in the diagram to the right. So first of all, there's a sensor. Um, for face recognition, is a um, webcam, or for fingerprint recognition, maybe it's such a nifty device. Um, um, they acquire the uh, images of parts of the body you want to use for um, identification. Um, these sensors are normally um, directly connected to a standard PC via USB. And on this standard PC, the biometric application uh, runs the biometric application. Um, it takes the uh, raw images from the sensor and do some pre-processing stuff, so um, doing uh, filtering the, the noise and um, extracting the biometric features. If you come in contact um, with a biometric system for the first time, it's called um, the enrollment. So the biometric features and possibly um, your user ID are stored in the database. And for later use, um, the authentication process, the um, life taking, life taking um, images of the uh, biometric images are um, compared to the data stored in the database. And the system, um, and then the matcher says, uh, okay, uh, you are the um, guy you pretend to be. You pretend to be. So um, all parts of the system are also positive and point text. So first of all, um, you can attack the biometric data on the way um, from the sensor to the database. So you can um, attack the the USB data, 
on um, from the sensor to the PC, or um, the template, the reference data inside the database. Um, you can all, all um, also try to attack the um, biometric software itself, so making changes to the to the matcher so that um, it will match any feature of, of anyone. Um, but for all these attacks, um, you will need um, unauthorized access um, directly or remote access system. Um, and that's why um, the attacks um, which are using the sensor are the, the masterpiece of the attacks because they couldn't be prevented because you always have to um, get access to the sensor itself. Okay, um, let's start with the attacks to the communication. Um, as I already mentioned, is uh, data between um, the sensor and the computer. And before you um, can attack it, um, you have to, to sniff the data. And there are different possibilities to do so. So there may be a, a hardware sniffer, like a USB agent or USB tracker, shown in the picture um, on top. Um, this device are um, connected between the sensor and the computer and sniffs the uh, low level, so link, link level data communication. Um, because um, all parts of the systems also radiate electromagnetic um, fields, so you maybe can um, pick it up with a blue radio and um, decrypt the uh, biometric data later on. Um, if you don't have such a device, so maybe you would only use a software USB scanner. And um, this software um, is installed between the driver of the hardware, uh, of, the, of the biometric device and the operation system, and sniffs all the data coming through. Okay, let's come to the first attack. And the first attack is called um, the uh, replay attack. So you first um, sniff the data, as I already mentioned, and after that you will um, replay it directly. And I will show it right now to you. But first of all, um, I will demonstrate it with an original sensor, so just to make sure you know how it works. I will lock the computer. And in the computer, my um, template of the um, right index finger is stored. So and if I slide it over the sensor, it says um, erfolgreich, and I can lock on. And over here, it's the um, ARM7 development board. Um, it's, by the way, the first time this is shown on any conference. Um, it's emulating the IBM sensor, um, which could be bought for about 50 euros or so. And um, this attack, if, they, um, if it works, it will work on, um, or it's tested on Windows Vista and Windows XP so far, but I'm sure it could be implemented for other um, operating systems as well. So, um, I will lock the computer, and first of all, if you can over there, here it says, please connect the fingerprint reader. I will connect it, and then it says, please move your finger over the data. And if I press this button, work. So you don't need to do any um, 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 any dummy fingers to, to fool the system, but just the development board is enough. Um, yeah, doing the test with this board, um, we discovered strange behavior um, of the um, biometric software and the BIOS, because um, you, on, you also can use the fingerprint reader for accessing the, the BIOS um, settings. Um, so the, the BIOS 
crashed um, sometimes and shows strange characters on the screen. So I'm pretty sure there are a lot of work um, which could be done in this area. And maybe you could um, hack the software through this um, arm board with um, strange packages you send and the computer won't expect it. Um, what you also can do is not um, directly replaying the sniff packages, but um, inserting own payload. So um, actually what I have shown you wasn't a directly um, sniffed, um, 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 a direct sniff um, which I have um, inserted, but a fingerprint which was taken from a bottle and digitalized, and I will show you later on how it works. So you can um, hack um, such a, a ThinkPad notebook with a fingerprint reader included, and you only need a, a bottle or a glass from someone who is um, involved in the system. Um, you also can um, try to brute force um, with a lot of different um, fingerprints, for example. So you can try to um, put all the main features to one fingerprint or grab a um, big database for the most common fingerprints or the most common faces, for example. Um, and it's also um, cool to um, analyze the template data. So if you can insert um, defined um, pictures, they only slide on, a, on some points, then um, it's easier to um, analyze the template data. Um, and as, um, as I already mentioned, um, dummy fingers is um, what you want to get. So you also can um, use the sniffed communication um, images um, to make dummy fingers afterward. Okay, the second part is um, attacking to the templates. And before you can attack the templates, you have to um, find out where they are stored. So if they are not stored in the sensor itself, um, it will be stored in the file system or in the registry, which is even a part of the file system. And um, you can find out um, where they are stored if you use um, the software like Filemon or Wegmon um, to look at the, at the changes of the file system or the registry doing enrollment or doing logon. And um, yeah, if you have um, found where it's stored, then you have to um, check the template to user correlation, so um, which um, templates belongs to which user and which algorithm uh, which algorithms are used and obviously if there are any checksums or so. Um, if you have analyzed the structure, you can manipulate the, the template itself. So there are different possibilities. Um, so first of all, you can add or delete a template whether um, you want to get access or don't want to be recognized by the system. Um, you also can um, put two people uh, matching to one template so the original user won't recognize that um, um, his template or her template um, has been hacked. Um, and of course you can extract the data from the template to make dummy fingers too. So if you know um, which um, features are stored in the template, you can recreate a, a fingerprint and use it for making the finger. Okay. Let's come um, to the part I am um, most the attacks using the sensor. And first of all, we'll start with um, fingerprint recognition. Um, the fingerprint recognition are the most, mostly used 